Hello, my name is Enosafo, and I'm taking you on a journey that seeks to demystify the assumed notion that has plagued the concept of insurance claims in our society. Before we delve any deeper though, let me give you a brief understanding as to what insurance is. My name is Dr. Justice Yao Ufuri, the Commissioner of Insurance, National Insurance Commission. I am the CEO of the National Insurance Commission. Insurance plays a very significant role in society because everything hinges on insurance. The big uh, research and um, gadgets that are produced by this world, they're all based on insurance because those who go to space, for example, those who build a space shuttle, without insurance, they can't do their work. There should be some insurance, something to protect you. Once you have some protection, then you, are, you, have, you have the ability to take a risk because you know when the unforeseen happens, there's someone you can actually hang on. And um, that is why insurance is so vital. The banks, for example, cannot operate well without insurance. Banks will give out loans, but they take some insurance to protect their losses. So insurance deals with risk, and as human beings, as far as risk is part of our lives, there's always the need for insurance. You can't do away with insurance. Now that we understand what insurance is, let us listen to some who have experienced this concept. My name is Micah Teria Fenny. One afternoon, I was approached by a sales guy in my office, trying to convince me to pick up a funeral policy. I didn't want to take it because we all know some insurance company right here in Ghana, they don't deliver on their promises. And I remember one statement that the guy made that really struck me was, a good life deserves a very good buy. I was like, wow, let me give it a try. Let me put that onto the policy and see how it goes. So I decided to sign that onto the policy. Fast forward around 2019 December, that passed on. So I remembered, I signed on onto the plan called the Transitions Plan. I called them and I must tell you, no time. They were there to pick the, the, the dead body from the hospital to the air morgue. I was introduced to my arranger who happens to be, who happens to be the person who helped me plan that through now. The person asked me of my policy number and confirmed that I indeed have a plan with them. The family members really wanted to know um, how the funeral will be held. So I told them I have a policy for that. After the service, I receive a lot of applause for my church members, my family members, even those who refused to sign on to the policy when the, 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 the guy came. They said, Michael, you've really, really done well. But one statement really struck me, a message that came from my grandma. She was like, Micah, I really want the same thing to be done to me when I finally say goodbye to my maker. I told her, don't worry. Though I don't have a policy for you, I'll make sure they also give you a befitting funeral services. So a day or two, I was there and I received a notification on my phone, which happens to be cash, which is part of the policy that I signed. I was like, wow, I'm really impressed. These people have really, really delivered on their promises. So what I want to say is, if you want a stress-free and a befitting funeral service for your loved one, I recommend you look for a trusted insurance company and put your loved one on it because tomorrow is never promised. My name is Edmond Nakaho and um, I'm an entrepreneur and um, I work with Mina Ivan Studio. On the 18th of August, I had an accident on the Jolu traffic light heading towards to La Paz. Within a second, I just heard a big bang. Then Sprinter car hit me from behind to hit the other car that was broken down on the road. So from there, I had to call the police immediately for them to come in. Police came in. They came after, it was about 30 minutes or so, they came. Uh, it had rain very heavily that night. So we went to the police station, went home. The next morning I was told to report to the police station for my statement to be taken. So, um, went for the statement. 
I took, uh, went to the hospital too after the statement was taken. The doctors checked me out. And from there, I came back to the police station. A DVLA will come and you know, check the car for, we were told to pay some money for DVLA for, for them to come and you know, do their process and check the car. We were supposed to settle with the other party that was involved with the accident, the sprinter driver and um, then I. But he wasn't ready to settle, so we ended up going to the court. It took about a month for all that process to go through. And from there, I had to go to Central Police Station in Accra to take another forms from there to give to the police people so that they can type my police reports for me. It took about some few weeks, three weeks, for them to finish printing or typing, however it went. It took a, a little bit of time for them to finish. And I, re I called my insurance company and they asked me to bring it in immediately. So I got there, I gave it to them, and they told me they'll be calling me in the next day for my check. So I came back to the house and um, they called me the next day that my check was ready around one area, in the, around one o'clock. So I went to the insurance company, I took my check and um, I went to start to work on my car. I am Vera Tansaki. On the 18th of June, 2021, I was in the kitchen cooking, but all of a sudden, explosion occurred. The person who saw me outside and took me to the hospital was my landlady. After two, three days later, I realized that from my tie to my feet was affected. The burns affected both hands and both legs. It wasn't easy. I couldn't sleep nor eat. The pain alone was something else. Whilst at the hospital, I even forgot that I was on insurance. It was after I was discharged two weeks later that I remembered that I was on insurance. But I said to myself, I'm not sure they will pay much attention to me since I have been discharged. My mom was listening to a program on a radio station and these insurance people were invited over to enlighten Ghanaians more about their insurance. It was then that my mom called me and asked me if I was part. I told her yes. But I told her that I'm not sure they'll give me the needed attention since I was discharged. She then told me not to give up as she tried because there's no harm in trying. The next day, I went to the insurance office. I met a lady. I explained everything to her. She gave me a day that she called back. I went back home. I waited for two to three days. She, wa she wasn't calling. So I went back to the office. And then she explained to me that they need some documents that can help in the process. I then went back home and was where am I going to get all these documents since I'm back to Sinyane? Because the incident happened in Takrade. God being so good, I then realized that I had a document that I can show for them to start the process. So on that fateful day, after everything was done, she then told me that it's either I get a call or a test. So on the 10th of January, I had a call from the insurance office. They then told me that they've gotten all the documents and they will get back to me. Later in the day, I had a call from where I work, the accountant there. He then told me to come so that we can go through everything before he confirms whether I was on admission or not. I did that the next day. Right in front of me, he went through everything and confirmed to their senior most that truly I was on admission on the 18th of June and discharged on the 19th of July, 2021. After I had the call on the 10th of January, within two, two to four days, I had my money. But before then, they called me, told me the amount, and then asked me whether they can deposit it into my account. And I said, yes, I am glad 
I got what I was supposed to get. Now, these are but a few people who have enjoyed the benefits of insurance without any hustle. And this is the foundation on which we can introduce to you industry experts and partners that will further demystify this concept and introduce you to the campaign of Insurance Pays. My name is Wilson Tay. I am the chairman of the ICG, ICG meaning Insurance Awareness Coordinators Group. Now, in 2015, there was uh, some research work done by the industry, supported and funded by the GIZ, to find out why insurance usage as a financial intermediation tool is low in Ghana. Uh, I'm sure you're aware that insurance penetration in Ghana is just about the paltry 1.2% of the GDP. And some issues were, were discovered as a result of the research. Now, there was therefore the need to set up a body outside the industry, so to speak, to work on public awareness and also to act as consumer protection because our role, the ICG's role, is dual. We inform the public and then we bring the misgivings of the public also from the public to the insurance industry. My name is Angela Ama. I work with GIZ specifically within the program for sustainable economic development. I'm a component manager overseeing the implementation of activities within the insurance industry that are co-designed with stakeholders. Uh, GIZ is a, a German-funded uh, institution. We have actually been working in the financial sector since 2006, and specifically within the insurance industry since 2010. Our interventions actually started on the backdrop of micro-insurance development in the country, knowing that for our population, a lot of us fall within the informal sector. We were looking at how we could let the informal sector also play within insurance because traditionally they have been excluded uh, from insurance. We'll be working with the regulator sector associations uh, on, on this activity. The old conception was that insurance was for the rich, but um, with the advent of micro-insurance where insurance is made accessible to the low-income earners, uh, it has actually led to the inclusion of people who would have been uh, out of the insurance uh, space. So as we speak, um, Ghana is second to South Africa in terms of insurance uh, adoption. South Africa has a percentage of 59-60%. Ghana, as of last year, had a percentage of 44%. So in Ghana, 44% of working people have some kind of insurance, be it the traditional insurance that we know of, or micro-insurance. As I said, Ghana is next to South Africa in terms of adoption of insurance. And when I talk of adoption of insurance, I mean people in society believing in insurance and actually buying some kind of insurance. We have other jurisdictions where insurance penetration might be higher than Ghana, but the adoption of insurance is very low. Uh, people in so some of these societies don't actually believe in insurance, so they don't buy insurance. It's the corporate entities that buy insurance. My name is Ernest Frempong. I'm a board member of the Ghana Insurance Association and the chairman of the Public Relations and External Liaison Committee of the board. A lot of people are outside the financial services sector. Um, a lot of people don't have access to or are not, don't have any form of financial, are not enjoying any sort of financial services. So we have what we call even micro insurance where people even pay premiums almost on a daily basis for life insurance and even personal accident and other non-life insurance where you insure, where under normal circumstances you will not be able to pay an annual premium, which is huge. So even those that are, uh, are not so much well to do, who don't have enough money to pay premiums uh, on a large scale, let's say on an annual basis, can even pay uh, on a daily basis towards protecting their shops, 
their houses, their properties and businesses. So insurance actually brings people into the financial service sector, sector to the financial net, so that they can also benefit from um, 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 the financial services or products that are available on the market. Now, in spite of the fact that insurance companies pay claims, which unfortunately the public is not aware of, the bone of contention between insurance companies and the public, insurance public, is that insurance companies do not pay claims. Uh, some research work was done, and insurance companies were, there's a perception out there from the research results that insurance companies don't pay claims. So we thought that, look, for people to appreciate and to understand the relevance of insurance, we needed to do a campaign, which is the insurance pays. Now, at the end of the day, uh, we are looking at convincing the public that it is worthwhile to buy insurance. Now, general public must understand that if there are any experiences that they've had in the past, as far as insurance claims are concerned, that was in the past. We're talking about now and we are talking about the future. Uh, as we speak, the regulator as the National Insurance Commission has set up claims protocol. Uh, insurance companies are supposed to pay claims within a certain minimum time. Yeah, NIC, as the insurance regulator, has actually developed claims guidelines, which spells out the, the processes that insurance companies would have to follow and the timelines allocated for every process and payment of claims. Uh, this is aimed at making sure that insurance companies pay genuine claims expeditiously so as to build public confidence. If people have issues with insurance companies, they can always fall on the regulator, the National Insurance Commission, to address such issues. We actually have reached a point where some minor claims are paid within the same day. And currently, as we speak also, there is a program going out there. And what we are doing is informing the public on a complaints bureau that has been set up by the insurance companies themselves called CIMAP. It's an attempt by the insurance companies to do self-regulation. What that does is that they're giving out numbers in the event that you have, you are dissatisfied about your dealings with any insurance company, you can call that number and report that company to the Association of Insurers. Now, there's something that I need for the public to understand that sometimes some of the delay don't come necessarily from the insurance companies. Sometimes the insurance companies don't get a correct notification. Sometimes people just say, oh, insurance for one to ya. Now, if you ask him whether he's had an experience before, all they say is, oh, a friend told me. Some of the issues also, because we need to certify that indeed there is a genuine claim. We depend on reports from other bodies, like the police, like fire service, and like the doctors. Now, if there's a delay there, that's not our delay, unfortunately, but then since we are paying, well, the blame falls on us. So once you have, a, you have an incident, once you're insured, the first thing is report immediately to the insurance company. The insurance company will then direct you as to how to make your claim. They'll give you forms to fill. They'll give you what other documents you need to submit. And your claim will be processed as quickly as you submit the documents. And we are talking about today's insurance company. We're not talking about yesterday's insurance companies. What wonderful insights into the world and concept of insurance. If you had any doubts, of obtaining insurance for yourself, I'm sure this journey you joined me on has eradicated any of such fears. The insurance industry wants to send a message and here it is. Insurance pays. Notify. Submit. Get, Get paid. paid. Wait, maybe you didn't catch that. Let's hear it one more time. Insurance pays. So notify. Submit and get paid. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Remember, insurance pays. Notify, submit, and get paid.